sovereign debt. Uh, people worry about it not just in the context of Argentina, but uh, in, in, in Europe, um, partly because people wonder when we look out at Europe uh, a few years hence, will it look the same as it, as it, as it is now? And we actually, uh, at a time when it was less talked about, uh, got a scholar, a uh, uh, practitioner, but one who had studied to a great deal the law of money to reflect on what would happen if a single currency uh, like the euro were to break up. A lot of time had been spent thinking about how to put it together. At that point in time, less time being spent uh, thinking about the breakup, not so much in terms of the politics or economics of it, but the implications uh, for contracts and uh, uh, the, the, a number of legal issues. My sense is that while it's not polite in many settings in, on the continent to talk about the breakup of the European Monetary Union, that many of us think that if things go the way they are going currently, that that is a very realistic possibility. Now. If that's a very realistic possibility, you would think that transactions on the capital markets would be anticipating that and putting in place mechanisms in contracts to protect against that eventuality. And my sense is that there's been a lot less of contract modification than one would think given the probabilities of this happening. Now, so I'm curious about what your sense of that is and I'm also, in terms of articles, if, I'm, if my premise is correct that a lot of times it's very difficult to put in place new provisions that say really bad stuff is going to happen because it's just not polite to talk about it in the negotiating sense. Well, then maybe that's the kind of article we also need where it says, look, guys, if you don't put this in place, it's negligence. Yes, I, I, I think, I mean, there obviously has been a lot of discussion in the market, particularly since the, the, the Greek bail-in and what's happened in Cyprus, about uh, whether one should provide in the, in the, uh, the contract uh, for uh, a Eurozone exit. That you're right, there is a certain political element to this, particularly when the uh, issuer is itself a sovereign. Uh, if you're a member of a club, you do not uh, talk about your exit from the club <laughs> in your own document. But in terms of contractual provisions, uh, you know, there's been serious debate about uh, whether it is sensible or indeed uh, necessary or whether it would be negligent not to put provisions in the contract. And I think that th th there are two possible scenarios for a, a Eurozone exit. One would be one that's not planned. It, it, it's a, a, what we call a messy exit, in which case there would be exchange controls, an overnight introduction of a new currency and so on. Uh, and a, a, a lot of the law that would be applied uh, in that situation, of course, depends on the, the, the governing law uh, of the contract. Uh, if uh, English law were applied, let's say, uh, and the euro still existed and the contract was denominated in euros, then the payment ought to be enforced in euros. But of course, an enforcement is only as good as the assets that the issuer would have outside its jurisdiction. If the assets are all within the jurisdiction, then you can take your judgment and it will be torn up by the local courts. So there's a messy exit. Uh, a non-messy exit would probably involve some kind of uh, regulation or law which is introduced at uh, a Euro European level, which would dictate uh, what happens. There would be an overriding uh, provision that changes all contractual provisions and uh, uh, overrides them. And that would be rather like on the introduction of the Euro, uh, where we had a regulation which said that all peseta denominated debts will henceforth be paid in Euros at a fixed exchange rate. No one had to worry about what the contract said because it was provided for by law. But the extraterritorial reach of that law, and, it, and therefore whether we did or did not have to worry about it in the context of contracts around the world, is uh, you know a, 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 an interesting it raises interesting questions. And to get back to uh, Me Too's uh, point about whether it would be negligent not to explore in greater detail these issues now. It would be difficult uh, to provide 
with sufficient detail in our contracts for the eventuality because as Lachlan says, uh, there we can contemplate this happening with different facts and the facts would always be important and we just don't know. So now we have information. We have seen what happened in Cyprus some weeks ago. Now from my outsider's perspective on what happened in Cyprus, if I project that forward in terms of the what seemed to me utterly incompetent decision making by a number of different parties, that seems to predict that when the breakup occurs, if it does occur, it will be utterly chaotic and it will the decision will be made at 5 a.m. by people who are not thinking properly about it because that's what seemed like it happened in Cyprus. So if that if and you can correct me as to whether or not the decision making in Cyprus is something that we should be worried about occurring on a larger scale in the sense of what you've seen in with Greece and with with Spain and Italy. But to me that says I should be scared that this will be a disorderly breakup. And I think I would agree with that. I think that uh, if there is going to be a Eurozone equi uh, exit, it's going to be the messy sort. Uh, but I, I'm not sure what I would be providing in a contract to deal with that. I mean, I, I suppose I can actually, having said that, yeah. I can think. <laughs> uh, I, I could provide that the, uh, the issuer, uh, if, if, if there is an exit from the euro, instead of paying in euros, it pays in dollars at a fixed exchange rate. <clears throat> Whether that would be accepted by the issuer uh, is a moot point. I think it's highly unlikely. Whether the market would be alarmed by the fact that I felt it necessary to put that provision in the contract, I think is again a moot point. I suspect it would be rather suspicious of that issue because the, the investors would think that I knew something they didn't and that a messy breakup was imminent when perhaps it isn't. So it's, it, it, it's a difficult thing. You can predict that the, the breakup might be messy, but imposing a contractual solution that will work in all circumstances, th that is acceptable to the market, inventing that, that solution, I think, is quite difficult. But for those of us in the markets to put our heads in the sand about that it must be unacceptable. And there is, um, there is experience here. Again, the historian in, in, in you, um, we need to remind ourselves of all the points of detail. We used to call them the plumbing issues, but all the points of details that might be there. We had that experience a decade and a half ago of bringing together a currency, and we saw currencies disappear in that process. And um, it, it was surprising how little thought had been given into points of great importance in the scheme of things, like whose bank holidays would govern, uh, when there had been a multiplicity of bank holidays, uh, but usually you could tie any currency's bank holidays to the country of origin, and now we had a currency that embraced many countries, uh, and therefore would it be enough that it was a holiday in one of those countries to be a bank holiday, in which case we'd have 50 plus, uh, <laughs> or would it be uh, necessary that it be a holiday in all of them, in which case we'd have only two. Two versus 50 grace periods that might follow from that. That was a lot of money when you added up uh, uh, all the impacted contracts. Have we learned lessons, because again, 15, 20 years ago when people started to think about these things, are we gonna lose some of the people with the relevant experience and leave this to be an exercise of reinventing a wheel, perhaps not as thought through a wheel, because this all comes in a messy way and as a measure of, of, of surprise. We want to put on the table the kinds of thought pieces that will get people thinking about that, drawing on the experience of the past, but also uh, embracing the new facts as they come out.